The pre-invasion bombing of Europe. From aerodromes all over Britain, bombers and crews of the Anglo-American Second Tactical Air Force depart on their sorties for the softening up of occupied European territory. The daylight missions which encompass the wide and varied field of military objectives. As darkness falls, the engines of the heavy bombers of Bomber Command start up to complete the non-stop offensive which the Royal Air Force, in cooperation with the Allied Air Forces, is carrying out with devastating effect. The targets which must be attacked and destroyed before the Allied armies can set foot in Europe are scattered over a vast area and affect the whole German military machine. Big coastal batteries, gun sites and shore defences. E-boat pens and hideouts along the seaboard. Railway centres, goods yards and engine repair shops. Industry of every kind which helps to arm the German forces. Target selection which calls for great accuracy in bombing. We have many friends in Europe. We go to great lengths to minimise damage and suffering to France and Frenchmen. The bombing of occupied countries is only carried out because it is a stern military necessity. Railway centres are high on the list of targets. It is estimated that already 50,000 skilled railwaymen have been withdrawn from Germany to end the chaos on the French and Belgian railways caused by Allied attacks. Only from the air can we cause widespread destruction to Hitler's military storehouses and factories spread across the map of Europe. It is this huge assignment that our aircraft and airmen are dealing with. For them, the Second Front has long started. What he may, Hitler cannot escape the fury of the Allied air offensive. It paves the way for the liberating forces of the United Nations massed for the final blow at tyranny.